Hello everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Raji Lakshmi and uh, my topic is the review of evidence, CRRT versus SLED. So before going into literature per se, uh, I will brush off a few concepts that already uh, been extensively discussed in uh, previous classes. What does RRT do? It removes the water and electrolytes and uh, helps to regain the normal homeostasis, normal physiological homeostasis. It executes it, this function with the help of filtration or ultrafiltration, diffusion and convection. The main modalities of RRT are intermittent hemodialysis, CRRT and SLED, and of course, peritoneal dialysis. Diffusion is the main core principle behind the modality of intermittent hemodialysis. Convection, uh, is the main principle behind the CRRT. But in the CRRT, convection plays a major role. Along with conversion, there will be a little bit of diffusion process will also happen. In case of the sled, it's a combination of both convection and diffusion. How does diffusion happen? There, there will be transfer of ions across the membrane, across the dialysis membranes. So this exchange happens along the concentration gradient. This uh, movement of different electrolytes and different molecules happens along the concentration gradient. So on one side of the membrane, blood will uh, circulate. On opposite side of the membrane, dialysate fluid will circulate. By altering the concentration of various molecules in the dialysate fluid, we can alter the rate of diffusion. The rate of diffusion depends upon concentration gradient between blood and dialysate fluid, the permeability of the membrane, and charge of particles. So once the concentration on the both the sides of membrane is, has been equal, the diffusion process will get ceased. In case of the convection, in contrast to diffusion, it doesn't depend upon the concentration gradient. The dialysate fluid or in the dialysate compartment, there will be generation of the negative pressure because of rapid flow of the fluid. So because of this uh, negative pressure, there will be transmembrane pressure gradient. There will be uh, 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 generation of transmembrane pressure gradient. This is the main driving force. Because of this gradient, there will be uh, movement of the solvent and along with the sol solvent, it will uh, drag the solutes. That is called solvent drag. So the main mechanism behind removal of uh, electrolytes or removal of solutes from the blood is solvent drag. So in contrast to, di in contrast to diffusion, the removal of solutes doesn't depends upon the concentration gradient or molecular size or charge of the particle. So the efficacy of both solvent and solute removal, that means removal of water and urea, creatine, whatever solutes that we want to remove, the efficacy in terms of the solute and solvent, solvent removal compared to diffusion, convection plays uh, uh, a major role and it is superior to diffusion process. So uh, in case of the diffusion, in case of intermittent hemodialysis, the diffusion process is, uh, will be facilitated by counter current flow of both blood and dialysate fluid. This is the filter, co contains the parallelly placed porous channels. Within the channels, the blood will circulate and around the channels, dialysate fluid will get circulated. But both will flow, both will move in the opposite direction. It facilitates the concentration gradient and diffusion process. Water will get removed with the help of filtration and convection. Solutes will get removed uh, with convection and diffusion process. So before choosing any modality of RRT, what are the factors we need to look at, especially in critically ill patients? All, all ICU patients will be on the edge. So little bit of shifts in the uh, fluids, a little bit of volume changes can push the patient to hemodynamic, uh, can cause a hemodynamic instability and the patient may uh, require high vasopressor support. So we have to look at what is the influence or effect of our modality of RRT on hemodynamics and what is the efficiency of solute removal and how does it going to influence the renal recovery? 
and what is the cost of puts and uh, does the modality of IRT requires anticoagulation and what is the amount of expertise it requires for the maintenance and what is the workload on the staff. <clears throat> so we'll look, look at uh, into each factor. Hemodynamic instability wise as uh, CRRT or convection process, <clears throat> it's a very much slow. The blood flow rate, we can start as low as 100 ml per minute and the ultra filtration rate, we can start with 25 ml per minute. But in case of intermittent hemodialysis, the blood flow rate will be more than 300 ml per minute. It will be around 300 to 500 ml per minute. Ultra filtration rate, of course, more than 250 to 300 ml per hour. So uh, definitely the volume shifts will be more in case of intermittent hemodialysis. So uh, because of high volume shifts, incidence of hemodynamic instability or incidence of requirement of vasopressors will be more with IHD compared to CRRT. So when it's coming to hemodynamic, CRRT uh, stays, uh, uh, takes more score over IHD. When uh, we look at SLED, it's a combination of uh, diffusion and convection. And the fluid shifts will be in between CRRT and IHD. The evidence says the SLED, the, in, in terms of hemodynamic stability, it's almost comparable with CRRT. And another advantage of SLED is we can adjust the flow rates, blood flow rates and ultra filtration rates as per patient need and patient tolerance. We can do prolonged session of SLED and, uh, to avoid hemodynamic instability. Coming to solute removal, as I told, convection is superior to diffusion to remove the solutes. But the advantage of IHD is we can remove the solutes fastly. If patient requires fast removal of electrolytes, for example, hyperkalemia causing heart block. In such scenario, patient requires rapid decrease of potassium levels. If patient is having uremic uh, pericarditis, uremic encephalopathy, in such scenario, we, have, we need to reduce the urea as fast as possible. Even though we need to reduce only one third or one fourth of the baseline, but uh, we have to reduce as fast as possible to, uh, to decrease the morbidity. In such scenario, we can use IHD, but in regular critically ill patients, uh, if we compare the rate, uh, the efficiency of the solute removal, the, when, it, when, it, uh, when it comes to efficiency, the CRRT stands over IHD. But if patient requires fast removal of the solutes, we can choose IHD. SLED, of course, it removes the uh, solutes uh, the, uh, as uh, efficient as CRRT. And at the same time, we can remove the solutes as fast as IHD by adjusting the filtration rates and by adjust, adjusting the blood flow rates. When it comes to renal recovery, what is the influence of modality of RRT on the renal recovery? As we understood that the fluid shifts and incidence of hypotensive episodes are less with CRRT, so the organ hyperperfusion will also be less. So theoretically, it has to hazard the renal recovery. But evidence-wise, there is no strong evidence to support this physiological advantage of CRRT or SLED over other modalities of RRT. Cost-wise, IHD is cheaper, much, much cheaper than the CRRT because for CRRT, the major cost uh, being involved around uh, purchase of replacement solutions. But in case of IHD, we can prepare our own dialysate fluids. So the replacement solutions are very much costlier. And along with CRRT requires continuous anticoagulation. If patient is coagulopathic, we have to replace the, we have to do regional anticoagulation within the circuit that is, is citrate solutions. Those citrate solutions are even more costlier. So cost-wise, IHD stands over CRRT. And of course, let this also cheaper than the CRRT. <clears throat> This is the cost comparison between SLED and CRRT. CRRT with citrate, CRRT with heparin. The citrate uh, solutions are uh, more costlier and uh, the CRRT is more than two times costlier than the SLED. So in our Indian scenario, Indian economy scenario, CRRT may not be always feasible. 
anticoagulation. CRT requires absolute and continuous anticoagulation. So if patient is coagulopathy or thrombocytopenia, CRRT is uh, may be associated with high incidence of the bleeding. IHT, we can do three to four hours of dialysis without uh, anticoagulation. Even SLED also we can do with the minimal uh, anticoagulation or with no anticoagulation. These are the uh, fluctuations that we can see with the different modalities of RRT. With CRRT urea concentration, if you observe there, there are uh, hardly any fluctuations in the concentration. There is steady and slow fall of the concentration. There are no fluctuations in a day. But in case of IHD, there is wide range of the fluctuations. Because of uh, these fluctuations, a uh, patient can have uh, CNS dysfunction. The patient is already having some cerebral edema that can worsen the cerebral edema or increase the ICP. So if patient is ha having coexisting CNS dysfunction or some raised ICP, CRRT is preferred over the IHD. Sled wise, the, the, definitely there will be some fluctuations, but not as much as uh, IHD. There will be uh, very subtle fluctuations will be there in urea concentration. Coming to fluid balance, this is also same. In case of CRT, we can remove the fluids slow and steadily, but IHD, there is wide range of the fluctuations. If background cardiac dysfunction is there, if patient is having severe LV dysfunction, if we start them on IHD because of these rapid fluid shifts, patient can either go into shock or either go into fluid overload and heart failure. We have witnessed such scenario many, uh, many a times in ICU patients. So this is one of the studies uh, looking at the uh, hemodynamics. Uh, in, in case of the slit, they are uh, com comparing or they are observing the hemodynamics with fluid removal. If we look at it's around 18 hours of uh, slit with increase in the ultra filtration uh, fluid removal. There is no much difference in MAP, mean arterial pressure. Even with 500 ml, even with the three liters, there is no much difference in case of mean arterial pressure. So no much fluctuations in terms of the hemodynamics. So SLED is as friendly as uh, CRRT when, when it comes to hemodynamics, when it comes to fluctuations in concentration of the solutes. And of course, it's friendly in, in terms of the cost and anticoagulation. This is the very much recently uh, published uh, systematic review and meta-analysis published uh, in May 2021. Uh, China-based uh, review, <clears throat> it has included total 30 RCTs from 1998 to 2018. Total number of patients are 3,774. They have done two-level analysis, primary and secondary analysis. In the primary analysis, they have compared CRRT, IHD, SLED with PD. And in nine nodal analysis or secondary analysis, they have compared with different subtypes of in individual modality. That is continuous veno-venous hemodialysis, veno-venous uh, hemofiltration, veno-venous hemodiafiltration, IHD, IHD filtration, SLED and SLED filtration, and PD. They have uh, done uh, subgroup analysis. Their findings, uh, in terms of the survival, no modality uh, could uh, prove its uh, superiority over another modality. A few studies had shown that CRT may increase mort mortality when compared to SLED, but the quality of evidence uh, is very low and it's very much imprecise. What is the influence of RRT on, on renal recovery rate? Uh, it has shown that SLED is superior, superior in terms of the renal recovery rate when it compared to IHD or CRRT. When they have done nine nodal analysis, CVV HD wise, HDF is superior to other modalities of RRT when it comes to renal recovery rate. But there are no difference in terms of length of stay, RRT free days, and ventilator free days. This is another study published in around 2011. It's a retrospective uh, study included total 2,200 and uh, sorry, 2,200 patients comparing CRRT with IHD. There are, it, it has clear cutly shown that the CRRT, superior, CRRT is superior to IHD in terms of the mortality and renal recovery. 
it's another observational prospective observation study published in two, 2009 comparing crrt with I, ihd uh, they have studied 90 day mortality and renal recovery rate crrt is superior to ihd in terms of the renal recovery but uh, there is no benefit of crrt in terms of the mortality so another study uh, uh, comparing sled uh, with another, other modality of uh, sorry sled with uh, crrt in critically ill patients it's a cohort study published in 2015 it has included 158 patients uh, sorry 158 patients on crrt 74 patients on sled so CRT versus SLED, there is no difference in terms of the 30-day mortality, p-value is 0.29. In terms of renal recovery, uh, there is no statistically significant difference between CRRT and SLED. So another study, uh, another systematic review and meta-analysis meta comparing SLED with CRRT in terms of the mortality and the renal recovery rate. Uh, this analysis has included total 18 studies, total of 1564 patients. Among them, 738 were on CRRT, 826 were on SPLIN. So this analysis has uh, showed that slightly in favor of the uh, CRRT in terms of the renal recovery. They have done subgroup analysis depending upon the location of the patients in ICU patients and uh, <clears throat> Uh, ward, ward patients in both the group of in in both the groups crrt uh, has scored uh, over uh, sled in terms of the renal recovery slightly in favor of uh, crrt when it comes to renal recovery but when it comes to mortality there is no difference between crrt and the sled Other, other issues, other outcomes like number of treatments required, days of uh, days to renal recovery in terms of the hemodynamic instability, in terms of other organ dysfunction like CNS dysfunction, bleeding incidents and all, there is no difference, absolutely no difference between CRRT and the sled treatment groups. So conclusion, physiologically, definitely CRRT, especially CVV HDF is superior to any other modality of uh, dialysis when it comes to in terms of the hemodynamics and in terms of the fluctuation of the solute concentration and slightly it may favor renal recovery. But the major limitations of CRRT is maintenance, its cost and maintaining the anticoagulation and it increases the work burden on the staff, it requires expertise to maintain the uh, machine. So these are the major limitations. So to overcome these limitations, SLED has evolved and it has gained very much popularity. It is equally effective alternative uh, to CRRT. Uh, so when, it, when we compare the fluctuations in the hemodynamics or solute concentrations, we can, uh, it's almost equally comparable with CRRT. We can you know, choose SLED over the CRRT when, when the cost constraints are there, when we cannot initiate patient on anticoagulation. Not only that, we can titrate the flow rates and ultra filtration rate as per patient's uh, uh, tolerance and patient needs. But when patient is having a severe shock or already on stiff vasopressors, poor cardiac reserves, acute liver failure and the central edema with the raised ICP, we can uh, opt CRRT over any other modality of dialysis. Even there, if patient is not affordable, we can as well consider SLED over the CRRT. But when patients require rapid removal of solutes like life-threatening hyperkalemia, overdoses, poisonings, in such scenario, we have to initiate them on intermittent hemodialysis, not on the SLED. Thank you.